Let us have a look at question five. Question five deals with two graphs. The first graph is the cosine graph, and the second one is the sine graph. But it's not just the normal graphs. There's a vertical stretch here of factor a half, or minus a half in this case. Okay, so uh, of factor a half, actually, plus then, plus there is a reflection. Now let's see where did the reflection happen. Well, the positive y's became minus y, so it's a reflection in, now I'm talking about y, but I meant to say it is a reflection in the x-axis. So that is what happened to cosine if they ask you to describe those transformations. For the sine graph, something else happened. If you look at what's happened over there, we added 30 in the equation. So this here is a horizontal translation um, 30 degrees to the, what is it, to the left. If we add in the equation, we do the opposite. Okay, and also see that our domain lies from 0 to 180. So there's quite a few things there. Okay, the two graphs intersect. They're G. This is the sine graph of x plus 30. And then the one at the bottom is minus a half cos, um, what was it, cos x. Okay, still crossing at 90 and doing its usual thing. Okay, let's see what they want from us. The first question says, write down the period of g. Now remember, a period is um, the amount of degrees it is going to take this curve to complete a full cycle. The only time that your period of your graph changes is if you were to multiply that x with something. Here we're just adding or subtracting. So it is just literally moving left or moving right. So the period for one mark is 300 and 60 degrees. That was quite quick to see because we just added or subtracted from the x. We didn't multiply or divide. So it didn't cause another shift. So then they ask us, secondly, write down the amplitude of f. Now remember, f is your cosine function. Despite the fact that it has been reflected in the x-axis, its amplitude has also shifted. We shrunk this graph with a stretch factor, or we stretched it with a factor of a half. Okay? So your amplitude will be a maximum a half. Okay, so the amplitude of f, the amplitude is a half. It has a, a maximum of a half and a minimum of minus half. So, so far straightforward. These things you just need to know about your graphs. You've got two marks earned. So let's see the next one. The next one they say, find f of 180 and subtract from that 180 substituted into g. Now, 180 lies over here. Now, folks, we can see quite clearly. There goes the cosine graph. The cosine graph usually reaches its peak at the negative side here. But at this point, it has reached its peak, let me put it in black, at 180 degrees and a half. Now, we've got to do the same with the sine graph. The sine graph came down to 180, and if you put 180 into that equation over there, you get... Um, 210, and the sine of 210 is minus a half, your special angles. Okay, this one is for one mark, again. So this will be a half 
minus minus a half, which gives you a 1. The value of f of 180 minus g of 180 is indeed 1. Now here the interesting stuff starts. Also for one mark over here, so let's interpret. This question should not be difficult. They say f of x minus 10 is equal to g of x minus 10. So what happened is there's my graphs. Both of those graphs moved. How did they move? Well, it's minus 10. So I moved them 10 degrees to the right. Okay, there they were. It's now f of x minus 10. So it goes 10 degrees to um, the right. Now, if I go to where these are equal, this is the big thing. F and G are equal at that point. So what happened to the point? The point just moved 10 degrees to the right. Okay, so it will now be at 140. So here X will be 140,9 degrees. And they say use the graph to determine the values of x. So that's all we needed. We needed to identify that the 180, which was over here, moved to the 140,9. And then obviously our y value remained the same because it's a horizontal translation. Only the x values are affected. The y values are not affected. Remember that. The last one is nice. I love this one. For four marks, the cube root, or the, uh, the, what is that? The square root of 3 times the sine of x. The square root of 3 times the sine of x plus the cosine of x must be bigger and equal to 1. Now, folks, they say use your graphs. So there's something on this graph that you can draw on and put into this problem and see if it works. Let's have a look. What do I know? I know root 3 over 2. And I know a half. Remember, there's a 1 here. Now, the half can be the cosine of 60, or it can be the sine of 30, whichever one I choose to make it. This is, therefore, then, the cosine of 30 or it is the sine of 60. Now, what do I have in my equation? In my equation, I've got x plus 30. I've got the sine of x plus 30. Let me just make sure before I claim that. Yes, there it is. It's the sine of x plus 30. So clearly, I have got to form the 30 over here. So I'm going to Divide by 2, everything is divided by 2. So that's the first thing I did, is I multiplied throughout with a half to form my special angles. Okay, and in this case, I'm going to say that this here is what? The cosine of 30. So that means the cos of 30... Um, the sine of x plus this one will become the sine of 60. The cos of x must be bigger and equal to a half. Now remember sine cos cos sine is what we always work with. The sine of a, the cos of b, let me write that down for you so you can remember this. The sine of a the cos of b plus the cos of a, the sine of b, is equal to the sine of a plus b. And that's what I wanted. I want those two added. So I say, okay, this is the sine of x plus 30. And it's the sine of x plus 30 that must be bigger or equal to a half. Now let's go back. Where is it equal to a half? There. 
remember, it moved 30. So it's at minus 30 here. So where it would have been 0 over here, it comes back 30 degrees to go to 120. So we're looking at only that graph. We're asking, what are we asking, whether it's smaller than or greater than. It is greater than a half. Okay, so here it is smaller than a half. So between 0 and 120, remember this is a half. This graph will be um, bigger than a half. So finally, um, it happens where my function x lies between 120 and uh, bigger and equal to 0. That is exactly where my, my um, inequation is going to be bigger than 1.